<sighs> another day, another, I guess, rune factory. Ah! <laughs> ah, I love the smell of noms in the morning. <laughs> Hello, Daniel. Hope you're doing well. Otherwise, Donnakamada. My name is Sage Blake. I'm a wanderer, storyteller, artist mature, and we're back with what could only be described as a zombie hellscape. Because from last time, our objective has been made clear. We need to go through the zombie caves that we've been poking through for the longest and using as our training area. Oh, you'll see soon, Daniel. Hello, Alex. Hope you're doing well. Doing well with Ox eating big burglar? Nice! Always good to have a burger. Also, hello, Oxanon in the background. Backgrounds and on. Enjoy your bunga. Cowadunga. Lots of bunga. I guess while I'm taking care of the usual Rune Factory grind. A moment to uh, poke fun uh, to poke at a couple things. So, for starters, our charity event is over, so we're not going to be doing anything charity for at least a little bit. I figure it's for the better. For our first time doing a charity event, I'm not sure if I handled it correctly. I probably didn't. Zicker doesn't know you're gonna kick their ass at a board game. <laughs> oh boy, now they know. <laughs> I'm always charitable, Daniel. I work in a non-profit field, what'd you expect? I know you had to make the joke. It was an irresistible one. But yeah, at least for the moment, I'm not planning any charity events going forward. I may do something later on in the year, but even then, that's up to me. In an other unrelated news, we have finally have a status update for that uh, Rogue VR headset. <laughs> I already paid mention to it in Tay's Discord and in mine as well. By the way, I'm in both Discords. Follow both Discords if you want. Uh... It's being shipped. A couple days back, I was given a notey from FedEx that it was around Memphis, Tennessee. Yesterday, it said Stoughton, Virginia. So that means today, it's probably going to get a little bit closer. Unfortunately, it's not going to arrive today. But it'll come damn close. Chances are, I'm going to be spending some time tomorrow just trying to get a good feel for it. Because, again, it's slated to arrive tomorrow. That's assuming that FedEx and HP are both not lying to me, which... Let's face it, the both of them are actually pretty infamous about lying to customers about their packages. So, yeah, mileage is going to vary. Because just saying, on the one hand, HP is... Uh, yeah, they don't have a good track record. They've got a lot of instances of telling people one thing, and then the complete other happens. Including, but not limited to, equipment creation. And FedEx is also very infamous for just ding-dong ditching people with their packages, so yay. Still not as bad as every, but even still, I figure I should mention. Right, my road. This place. This is our objective. Ladies and gentlemen and other, boys, girls, and I don't care what's it's. Welcome to Ow! Zombie Hell. To credit, Ox. Who in Europe, in the Europe region, actually likes? Oh, fuck. 
true non god. Thanks. <laughs> to credit, I uh, had bigger plans with the no with the true nom gun, but this works just fine. Since we're at this crossroads, might as well mention there are a few new redeems in the chat, and Daniel's already touched upon one of them, the nom bomb. Ox has touched upon another true nom gun, Alpha. There's a beta version, which is a little bit different, not terribly much. Eh, uh, crap. <laughs> I may consider doing other gag-related nom stuff in the future. We'll see. Eat that. Eat that. Done. <sighs> But yeah, the reason why this place is, uh, the big Nom Wars of 2023, honestly, I might. This year is the year of the Nom. <laughs> Just for humor. But yeah, the big, uh, gimmick of this particular dungeon is a lot of the enemies have high defenses. This means that they're able to take a lot of blows and shrug them off. They're not able to take elemental damage. If anything, as you can see right there, they go down super quickly to elemental damage. Which is why I put Dark Element on my spear. I didn't put any materials away. Oh, gods, what am I doing with my life? I kind of want to keep that strong vine. I mean, if I were to discard something, it would probably be the strong vine. Switch. Oh, hey! Are you finally one of those godforsaken ravens I've been looking for? Yes, you are! Give me your feather. Aww. Fine. <laughs> pouty sages, pouty. What the? Mm. Rude. Rude. Thanks, game. You better dang Skippy hope this is a secret, otherwise I'm going to be very perturbed. Light spell three. Oh, prison of prisms. Shackle my prism in a prism. It is a very devastating spell. Part of the reason on that is specifically because, unlike the other iterations of the spell, the light orbs that you spawn out don't have an expiration date. Uh, or at least, they don't expire after a certain amount of hits. They have a time limit instead. It's a very devastating power.
need Reaper Slash on here. But I could also use the new Light Spell. <laughs> it's gold! Against certain enemies, it's not going to be as effective. Specifically, these pixies do resist light, but against most of the other chaff, it's going to be pretty dangerous. Like I said, the zombie hellscape. Because this place has a lot of strong enemies in it, and if we're not careful, we'll get swarmed in an instant. Oh, lovely. On top of that, there's apparently secret loot that we can't get to. <sighs> it's fine. You know what? Screw it. I should be eating raw ingredients like this, but I need the space. And moon drops are much more valuable as the alchemical stock that they are. Ruby. I think those are Sephira, but. I don't really need that. Up! That's fine, Alex. Enjoy your burger. Hell hath no fury like a burger that's gone cold. Sammy. I don't have space. I mean, I guess if I could discard one thing, it'd be the rubies. The potions I'm keeping with me, though. That's quick HP whenever I need it. Dangerous. 
dangerous area. Simply so I can rent their feathers. And by rent, I mean take without uh, ever intentionally giving it back. What? Get moving. Any poison? Tays and offos in the audience, please look away. This is bird abuse. Hey, it's either them or me. Honestly, I think the uh, I think the doctor has stolen enough of my money. What? Seriously? Seriously? Serves me right, Daniel. What? Oh, it's just oh, it's just your birdie. Fair. These birds are stinky. Answer, this is surprisingly not post-game. This is Arc 2. Yeah, I thought it was post-game 2, but as it turns out, there are like three different arcs to the game. What the- Mmm, you. Okay, that's not terrible. And at that to credit, I think we're maybe halfway through the second arc. Maybe a little before the end? Is maybe a little like uh before the halfway mark? Yeah, this is after that uh first set of credits. Now I actually uh put things away me. Ooh, stun chance. But nah. And with the blackbird feathers that we have, we should be able to make something with that. A wind cloak. So voila! With a shoulder piece and ambrosia thorn, I can make snow boots. Ambrosia thorn shouldn't be terrible to get. If anything, the shoulder piece is gonna be the pain in the ass, because I don't remember where you get that. I think it was from, like, some type of goblin enemy. Yeah, so I think for right now, my big. Actually. Quick question, game. In order to make the Corchesca Plus, what do I need? I have everything I need for that. Unfortunately, in order to make the Corchesca that I want to make, I'm gonna need more stamina. So at least for right now, let's just work on upgrading our cloak. Because that is 10,000? Nope. Nope. Hard no. I mean, I guess toss a pooby. Took a hit to my HP. And sleep it off. Let's upgrade my Corchesca. I don't know if it's gonna lose its imbuement by doing this. Well, let's assume it will. So, current attack power is 346, 333. Okay. So, if it's going to lose its imbuement. For right now, let's just focus on getting its attack power up. So to that end, 
Is there anything else? Is there anything that I have that can get me more? Okay, that's eight attack, but the issue is this is also going to improve defense a little bit. Even if it's just a one attack difference, it's something. Yeah, it should do. Francesca plus. And the big answer. It does, in fact, lose its imbuement. So I'm going to need to ingrain that back. There we go. Then the next thing I want to do... Maybe venture out, go and get an Ambrosia Thorn. Specific... Actually, Ambrosia Thorn is still going to be necessary because... of the other thing that I need to make with it. The Snow Boots. So maybe I should just go out, do some gallivanting. And steam bread for Halsey's. Alright, that takes care of that. So... Right, I don't... I don't think I remember where Gaius's are. And heck, technically eating these grasses aren't necessary either, but it's boosting my eating skill, and I feel like that's important. This ailment by itself reminds me. I need to make more paragons. A sonic dagger. That's why the loop exists. So I'm probably gonna need to loop around one more time just to go and get that chest. with your dual blade ability? I'm not sure. Regardless, it's a buff and at least with how I play Rune Factory, I don't I'm not reliant on buffs. Actually, no way. I think it actually increases I think it actually makes your attack rate faster for a short amount of time. That's a Okay, fine. You know what? Screw it. Screw it. Screw it. Screw it. We're... We're making some paragons. <sighs> I shouldn't be upset -y. I'm still gonna be upset -y. And pouting. I'm a grade-A fool. <sighs> what the... Mm. You son of a... Money! Totally worth it. There we go. Second port point active. There's a fishing spot here? Of all places for there to be fish. Whatever. No problems, just potentially improve. Exactly, Zendratius! 
Also, I hope you're doing well. I think I pronounced your name right, I'm not sure. Feel free to correct me if I didn't. Scramps! It's just an emerald vein. Oh, hey! Seriously? Your mates just abandoned you. What a jerk. Best spot for the big catch festival? Noted! I'll keep that in mind then. out of there. <sighs> okay. Emergency maneuver successful. Let's try again. Putting away Christmas decorations? Nice, nice. While well, I was doing research for one of the uh, bits of Rune Factory that I edited, I remember hearing tell that legendary scales can apparently be caught here with a little bit of a higher odds. I could have been lied to. I know there was another place, but I'm not mentioning the name of that. This is what happens when you uh, accidentally spoil yourself a little bit. Ooh, turbo! Crap! Okay, this is a little more tenable. Oh my fucking. I didn't even have a chance! Excuse? Wait, what? Scale fishing rate depends on game version. There are versions where it's the same amount at every spot, and other where it differ. You gotta be kidding me. So, what you're saying is, some copies of the game are just born lucky. That accurate? If that's the case, that's bull. That's like, that's, that's bull. Some consoles. Okay. That's still upsetting, but hey. If anything, that probably means that the, uh, the Steam version that I've got here doesn't give me any specific advantages. Let's make a cup of butter. If anything, after getting my uh, ass trashed like that, maybe I should just spend a little time boosting skills. Steam version is inferior in most cases? Ah, oh, damn. Ah, uh, well. In some respect, it does kind of make sense, specifically because Rune Factory originated on Nintendo consoles, so of course give them some favoritism. Yeah, honestly, I'll take what I can get, and what we got is... Rune Factory on PC. That's a huge W, honestly. I'm genuinely crossing my fingers in the hopes that RF3 special turns out decently. They're probably not going to make too many big changes, which is unfortunate, because I remember RF3 having a story that you could beat in, like, six hours if you were dedicated to it. That short. That too, yeah. RF4 special is hands down the pinnacle. I almost feel like I should maybe wait. Or if I have something that bolsters my maximum rune points, maybe eat that. 
I think that's all I need to actually be able to do it. But the downhill slope after RF4 doesn't keep going. Agreed! I haven't exactly heard great things about RF5, and part of it is involving a lot of the things that got tweaked. And hell, there's all there's already talk that uh, RF3 special might actually be a letdown, specifically because, at least with how it's been presenting, it doesn't look like they're going to be appreciable changes to anything in the game, really. That's not exactly a great thing, because RF3 is also considered one of the most divisive of the Rune Factories. Yeah, double agreed there. Rune Factory, I feel like, does its best when it's like this. When it's 2D like this. If anything, supposedly, RF3 special... There's, like, RF3 special and then a, another potential spin-off Rune Factory game coming up. Unless, like, the potential spin-off was actually just the re-release of 3. I don't remember. Just, I remember some rumor mailing going around. There we go, that'll be just enough. How much do you back see? Uh, answer. I'm familiar with most of the mechanics of Rune Factory, but this is my first time playing RF4. If there is something that you absolutely feel like you should probably mention to me that I might not know about, feel free to hint at it, but don't blatantly tell me. Part of why, like, playing games blind on stream is specifically because of the discovery factor. I get to gallivant and explore and figure things out by myself in some respects. A hint every so often is fine, especially when it looks like I'm stuck, but don't blatantly tell me things. That's my stance on it. I try to be flexible about this type of thing. Because, like, I do get it in some respects. Having watched a lot of people play games myself, I understand that it's frustrating watching someone new play a, a play game for the first time, but at the same right, if you're not there for that type of experience, what are you there for? Honest asking of the question. Because some level of backseating is appreciated, and I appreciate it too, just... Blatant handholding is the opposite extreme. Because I'd like to think I'm at least somewhat skilled of a gamer, even though I get sucker punched a lot. Of course, that might not come off correct. That might not come off. Don't want your good materials to be used for the recipe itself. Okay. No, actually, that's not telling too much. I didn't know that one. And that actually makes things a whole lot easier for me to manage with recipes and whatnot. Again, appreciate it. I was under the impression that, like, your better stuffs should be used in the baseline specifically because they do matter, but since you're telling me the opposite, I'll make sure to use that going forward. Thank you. <laughs> and see, this is the exact reason why I have the stance that I have with, uh, with backseating and whatnot, because I'll actually appreciate it more often than not. But there is a, uh, a fine balance. I think I need to make more food items. Because I have a decent amount of HP steps, but, like, nothing for root points. And at least with how I've noticed that I'm playing this game... I do do, uh, a decent amount of magic finagling. Mostly for healing, but... Every so often, I do pepper in a spell here or there. That Willy looked at me funny. Make some strawberry milk, just to bolster my money. And before I forget... Come close to killing myself. Yeah! Especially since, like, 
sometimes those non-streamlined ways do actually give you a little more appreciation for not just your methods, but also for figuring out newer methods, there's a different methods for do accomplishing the same thing. It's because of that flexibility that we get things like challenge runs and similar. I actually have debated on a couple occasions, like doing a Rune Factory challenge run of only a mono weapon. What I mean by that is like a single class of weapon. It's something that a lot of people tend to do, uh, tend to do when they approach Rune Factory. Just pick a weapon that's best for them and use that for a majority of it. They'll use other weapons too, but I want to see how far I can get by exclusively using one single type of weapon. I remember doing that in Rune Factory 3, and if I do end up doing an entire playthrough of that game, well, R3 special, sorry, I probably will approach it as a mono weapon challenge. Because it's fun to do that. Like, depending on the weapon, you can get absolutely royally screwed over. Because some weapons are just, let's face it, terrible at certain situations. Spears don't handle crowds well unless you're using techniques. Dual swords means that the enemy is going to die quickly, but you are too. Hammers have a lot of knockback and power, but they're really slow, meaning you could easily get screwed by an onslaught. What? Yeah, and fists actually have the opposite problem to, spe uh, to spears in that they have trouble closing the distance. Use that, because I can get a new one. Current armor is 4.2k, 3.8k. That's beefy. The inferior version of bread. Yeah, I think RF3's Colette would have a, a few choice words on that one. Actually, no, maybe not, considering she likes food, period. She just happens to have a bias to rice. That's actually a drop you have? Okay. Yeah. 